And our top story this morning, as we've been discussing, MPs are set to be briefed on the cyber threat posed by China later today, after suspicions that Beijing is behind a wave of cyber attacks against parliamentarians. They've also been accused of accessing the personal details of 40 million voters in a hack on the Electoral Commission in 2021. It's Monday, which means joining us now, it's the legend from Teesside, the Sun's columnist, the legend that is Rod Little. Rod, good morning, my friend. You've had a haircut. Good morning, son. mate. Good you've morning. had, your, you've you had your haircut. Yeah, we're good. Um, lots to talk about. Um, China. So we're talking to Tobias Elwood earlier, and Tobias has been saying to me for three years on this station, I'm telling you, Jez, there's an access. China, Russia, Iran, yeah. this country needs to be aware. And for all the people, Rod, who scream, oh, warmongering, you need to get wise. Today, Parliament are going to be told that 40 million of us have had our details hacked three years ago, and it's the first we've heard of it. We need to wise up, don't we? Yeah, so I think it's not the first we've heard of it. Didn't, didn't we know a little bit about this in August? But it was not revealed at the time that China was to blame. Simply people with an IQ above uh, the level of a bowl of oxtail soup suggested that it probably was China that was to blame. This was uh, when, when we were told that there was a massive hacking scandal uh, back at the end of uh, middle of 2023. So, yeah, I mean, and, and, and Tobias is right, isn't he? Um, even if we didn't have details of China's uh, malign cyber influence, we should at least have suspected that China and Russia and Iran, but particularly China and Russia, uh, we know that Russia has been involved in cyber warfare against us uh, on, 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 for at least 10 years. So we, we've got to be... I, I, I always hope, Jeremy, this is, this is what I hope, is that these scandals come out and I always think, oh, well, MI5 and MI6 and GCHQ, they've all got this covered. You know, we're doing the same thing to them. We're, we're level with them in this war. Uh, there's, there's no great problem. But I, I do fear that that may not be the case. Can I ask you a personal question? Do you have TikTok? And would you, if not, would you get it in light of this news? I'm 63, love. I you know, don't. You I might have, have it, Rod. TikTok. I can see you doing a TikTok dance or two. No, I can't. I'm just like me. We get excited as a pattern but, on the kitchen roll at our age. But, Rod, it, it is where young people get a lot of their news yeah. from nowadays. We were talking to Sarah Houston, our royal editor, earlier about how much TikTok was to blame for the spread of this misinformation about yes. Princess Catherine. Could it be that TikTok is now kind of a soft threat, as it were, in terms of, of destabilising us? Yeah. Well, of course it is. No, no question about it at all. I mean, my answer to that is that young people shouldn't be allowed to vote. But I know that's not a terribly popular, popular point of view. Uh, I think the age of voting should be raised to 25. Uh, but but, but that's, that's a different issue. Uh, yeah, but, but you're absolutely right. Of course, TikTok is a problem, much as was a problem, which at least in the end Boris Johnson recognised, that actually getting our nuclear power stations built and run by the Chinese was probably a bit of a dicey thing to do. So we've stopped all that now. But we are learning these things a little bit late in the day. Uh, and, and it is, of course, a worry. Um, Rod, the other story over the weekend is this. Um, the, the horrendous Russian attack that we saw, and we... This morning we started talking about it and I sort of had a theory, we were talking about it before, and then, um, who was it? Major Chip Chapman said absolutely no, but whilst terrible, awful, 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 useful rhetoric for, for, for Putin, really, and apparently the CIA warned Russia uh, before this was going to happen. It wasn't, you know, paid attention to. Within five minutes of it happening, yeah. he's blaming Ukraine. People are talking false flag. This has happened before. You would understand the cynics saying, hold on a minute, mate, not that you were part of this, but you've let this happen, and this absolutely does further... It persuades your people with all the rhetoric you'll do that, that, that you need to be even stronger in Ukraine. Do you have those suspicions, or am I going off the end of the... Uh, Am I going down the wrong way here? What, what, what do you make of that, Rob? I, I, I don't know. I do remember it wasn't just the CIA. I think it was also our intelligence services warning Putin that, uh, or, or warning the world that Moscow was going to face a terror attack very soon. And I think they got the date wrong. I think they were about a week out. But I remember that, that warning coming out and thinking, uh, well, that's an odd way to approach it. 
Uh, how's Putin going to respond to that? And the Russians dismissed it. And then the terror attack takes place. So it, it is very useful rhetoric for Putin uh, and very useful timing. Uh, and, you know, it, it's a horrible thing to do to um, to use those many dead as a, as a, as a weapon. Um, and I, I wouldn't want to do that. But I know that Vladimir Putin would have no such reservation. Uh, and so it has seemed at the moment. Um, the suggestion is that Ukraine let these people into the country um, via Ukraine and that they were heading back to Ukraine. Uh, let, let's hope that that's not true, but they've clearly been tortured. Uh, and I suspect that Vladimir Putin will get the answers from them that he wants to hear rather than the answers that are actually true. Uh, moving on to things a little bit closer to home now, Rod. Did you hear Jeremy Hunt's <laughs> comments over the weekend oh. that actually a £100,000 salary uh, was not quite enough for his constituents in Surrey? What do you make of that? Yeah, no, well, I, I wrote a bit about it in the Sunday Times this week and uh, revealed that I'm part of a charitable endeavour up here in Middlesbrough uh, called Feed Godalming Collective, where we gather together chicken palmos and send them to Surrey so that the hard-pressed people of, of southwest Surrey could have something to eat as they <laughs> desperately tried to pay their, uh, their, their mortgages. Uh, because it's, it's, it's shocked and appalled us up here. Um, the average wage up here, by the way, is £29,000 per year. Um, I, I, there is probably an element of truth in what Jeremy Hunt said, um, but it is the most tin-eared, stupid thing to say to a public where there is real poverty. It's not simply that we can't afford a chilled shabby with our suppers. It's just, uh, Rod, Rod, I'll tell you what it is. It's just, I don't know who advises these idiots. I don't know who yeah, has no, their ear, right? Yes, of course, yeah. there are people on larger salaries and none of us yeah. in society want to say you can't be successful. But you total... Oh, I nearly said the wrong word then. Did somebody not say in your ear, what's this country's under a cost of living crisis, you idiot? North of Watford Gap, because, oh, yeah, by the way, there is a large part of the country north of Watford Gap and outside the M25. People would die for that sort of money, you stupid man. The optics, the insensitivity exactly is beyond me, yeah. Ron. It's not rocket science, is it? No, no, it's not. It, it, it's, it's stupidity on an epic level. Um, and presumably he's attempting to curry favour with his own constituents, who I suspect may have had enough of him, um, which, which that would be a, uh, a tragedy for the world, wouldn't it, if he lost his seat? Um, but but, but it, is, it is so insulting to the, to the millions of people up here who live in what can only be described as poverty, and a poverty which has got worse because the inequality between North and South has increased under the Conservative government. Uh, and we are, we are uh, not speaking personally, but we in the North East are worse off now, comparatively, than before levelling up again. <laughs> you know, so there is a huge cynicism about the Conservative Party up here, and what Jeremy Hunt said will only exacerbate that. And Rod, we've, we've running out of time, but I just want to get your quick comments on this story. Have you heard about um, the UK government placing social media adverts in Vietnam to try and dissuade Vietnamese people from making the journey over to the UK? Yeah. Do you think that's a That's way? one of ten countries, not any in the other nine. And my only thought was, so you're using social media, are you, to advertise this? And the day was saying that China's getting all our information. Brilliant. Beyond me. Yeah, well, well you may be right about that. I, I, I mean, the other thing to say is that if we're going to have immigration, uh, I would be very happy to see it from Vietnam uh, because uh, the Vietnamese people who have come here before have been uh, entrepreneurial, industrious, hardworking and very little crime. Uh, and one of, one of the arguments I think we have to make in future is that we ought to have targeted immigration. And if there was any country I would target for immigration, well, Vietnamese, uh, Vietnam is one of the top ones. Amazing. Top man, Rod Little, thank you very much Isn't indeed.